Good day once again. A month or so ago, we celebrated here in Australia Anzac Day. And many, many thousands braved the, the wind, the morning cold, and went to memorials, monuments, and so on throughout the country to remember and to give thanks for the lives of those who died for us, also for those many families and communities who gave lives, their sons, daughters, husbands, wives, neighbours. And we gathered, I didn't brave the cold, I must confess, I enjoyed it and was moved by it on television. There was the scene on the Gold Coast at Elephant Rock. There was Canberra, where the official uh, government authorities were. There was um, the Kokoda Trail, where the Prime Minister was. And there was the very dignified and solemn and beautiful ceremony at the Melbourne War Memorial. And these occasions are part of history. Every year we meet to remember and to give thanks and to make present. And I was thinking also of our religious festivals, how much they are tied in with historical events. The first one, of course, would be the Jewish Passover. The Jews meet every year to celebrate the feast of Passover with a family meal. In for which they sacrifice or slaughter a lamb who has become part of the family and then is shared amongst the family. And the youngest there present asks the old asks the oldest, why are we gathered? And the oldest member present tells the story of the Exodus, the liberation of the people from slavery in Egypt. And then Fifty days later, they, the Jews gather again for the Festival of Weeks, where they remember and celebrate and give thanks for the covenant, the pact, the alliance, the agreement that God made with his people on Mount Sinai. He made his presence known in fire and smoke and engraved his contract on tablets of stone for the people to be able to follow and be his people. And likewise, we Christians every year celebrate Easter. And we recall Jesus' Passover from life through death to new life. And with him, we also are liberated and invited into the very life of God. And also then, 50 days later, we meet and celebrate the Feast of, of Pentecost, where we recall how God came down in the form of flame, tongues of fire, over the disciples, and engraved on their hearts the new law, the law of love, the law that Jesus lived, practiced, proclaimed, proclaimed amongst us, the law that has so little credence in our world today. But we celebrate this at Pentecost every year. We gather and give thanks that God came down amongst us and gave us his new law. And we see, and I mentioned last week, how that transformed the disciples. With clarity, with confidence, and with conviction. And likewise, 
So when we meet for those feasts every year, we're not just doing something per chance or because it's written in the book, but we're making present those magnificent events in the life of our world, in the life of our people, the people of uh, the chosen people, the Jews, coming out of slavery and then receiving a, a contract with God who said, you will be my people if you keep this covenant and I will be your God. And then that is taken even further when the Son of God also has his process of um, liberation from life through death into new life and we with him. And that is taken up again in Pentecost when the Holy Spirit comes down upon us. A gift we received formally in the sacrament of baptism and the sacrament of confirmation. So let's remember when we go to Mass on a Sunday that we're not just uh, fulfilling uh, a recommendation or availing of an opportunity but we are recalling and making present a magnificent historical event when Jesus said take and eat take and drink for this is my body this is my blood so have a good week and don't for, don't forget that the feast days we celebrate are feast days with a long history and we make present again just as we do at Anzac we re remake and relive and make present again those special events god bless have a good week and uh, we still have a YouTube channel that you can subscribe to. Bye now.